Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good in our community. And we're honored to kick it off with our first guest, Tanya Hart. She is a Senior Vice President of Executive Compensation and Total Rewards at First Horizon Bank. She's also a board member and HR Chair for Junior Achievement of Memphis in the Mid-South, an organization we love dearly here in the Mid-South doing amazing yes. good. But Tanya, let's start. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you for asking. And I will say I am so excited um, to be on the show today and just really honored to be here. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's start with a little bit of your personal story, because on your end, you have a very inspiring story. And even on your end in the mm -hmm. banking industry, starting as a teller and working your way all the way up through the ranks. So give us a little bit of just your childhood, a little bit of your story, especially as we step into this world of banking and finance. Yeah, absolutely. So um, definitely a native Memphian. Started with the bank. Um, it's been almost 30 years. I think I celebrate my 30th year with the company next year. And um, really started as a teller. I really wanted to, I was working on my degree at the University of Memphis and wanted to have kind of normal hours because before then I was used to working in retail. And also wanted to work for an organization that would help me with some of the tuition. And so started as a teller, um, was working at the location at Poplar and Holland. So it was really close to University of Memphis. I'll tell you, Jeremy, the part of my story too is that I met my husband there when I was a teller. <laughs> so he was a technician for a local alarm company or security company. And we met there, finished our degrees together at the University of Memphis. And um, 25 years later, we have two teenagers um, and one is 18, ready for college in the fall. But with my time at First Horizon, I think about, I describe my career as really more of three tranches, um, 30 years and really almost 10 years in each part of the organization. Starting with retail, um, I was a teller and then that person you come in to see um, to handle your banking needs and then the corporate trainer. From then I went on, and this is where my story really links more to junior achievement. I was the financial planner for 10 years Love that role. It was such a wealth of knowledge to be able to understand how people think about their finances. So I really loved that. And then from there, I was seeking another challenge. At this point, I was working on my MBA. My husband and I did that together as well at Christian Brothers and um, decided that I would do something else to really stretch myself. I took a really big risk and went to HR. And realistically, while I was there, um, was working on talent for the organization, but learned that I really loved HR and did not even understand this, but my background with a degree in finance, an MBA, and then also being a financial planner parlayed really closely to executive compensation. And so when I went there, I really learned where I should be. I met my tribe <laughs> in a lot of ways and so really loved um, being there. So that's where I am today. Give us a little bit of your vantage point in terms of the causes and obviously junior achievement being one of them that are important to you because you've, you've seen a lot of different sides. And to your point, when you look at the combination of HR, financial planning, yes. understanding the importance of education, yes. all of that parlays very well into the community and making a difference. And so talk about your passion to make a difference. Yeah, so it, it really does. You know, I have really tried to refine this for myself really in the last, last five years. Um, just thinking about what really motivates me from a community standpoint, I really want to be more philanthropic. And so with this, really align myself to really two different causes. One is poverty. I grew up in one of the most vulnerable zip codes in our city. And for me, the key was education. And so... The other thing was definitely the poverty aspect of it, but then also education. So I really want to do some things that would really help the community in the ways that it really helped me. And so with my background being in financial planning, um, having a finance degree and really just learning really on the front lines of things, um, junior achievement really spoke to me in a lot of ways. We're really focused more on financial literacy and with the culture that we have today as it relates to our youth, since so many things as it relates to celebrities, the way they live, the things that they have, and not really even understanding how leveraged they are um, and the way that they portray themselves. 
So with Junior Achievement, really trying to build these fundamental blocks for children, um, it really spoke to me. And I think a lot of us who've had children who've actually gone through Junior Achievement in BizTown, not only the financial part of it, but then also just to be able to see yourselves as something different. I mean, my daughter, who is now 15, will tell you exactly what she did at BizTown, what her role was. I asked her when I was preparing today, and I said, what did you do at BizTown? She goes, oh, mom, I was the CFO for FedEx. And so to be able to see yourselves, to be able to do that, and then realistically, just showing your achievement, dealing with the whole child, starting really from kindergarten and taking them all the way through high school. I think those are truly fundamental things, just it relates to really balancing the checkbook, understanding, I mean, I've dealt with so many wealthy people when I was a financial planner, but I learned that it really didn't matter what you make. It really meant how you spent it. And it's really those fundamental, really small things are really, I think, what stays with the child. And that's why I was so attracted from my own background, but then also the work that Junior Achievement does. I definitely want to bounce back and talk a lot about Junior Achievement, but it's interesting because you just said, Something I think I want to dive in a little bit deeper on is, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter how much money you make, it's how you spend it and save it. How you spend it. Yes. And so yes. Um, give me one or two of your favorite tips. And these can be things that you're sharing with the youth or just with, you know, yes. your, the adults as well. But one or two of your favorite <laughs> tips when it comes to the financial planning side, like you're talking about, it's not just the making the money, it's how you spend it and save yes. it. What, what's a favorite yes. tip or two? Yeah, I mean, a really favorite thing I tell everybody, so really start small. Don't even look at things as it relates to the long term. Start with building an emergency fund. That's so key because it wouldn't matter if I told you to or recommended that you invest so much in your 401k or pay these other bills off if you didn't have an emergency fund. So that's first and foremost and really key. But then also I talk to just a lot of young adults and they would say, Tanya, what should I do? And I say, the first thing you should always do is do your 401k and not just contribute to your 401k, but start really small. When you receive maybe an annual increase, increase that amount slowly every year. You don't have to get to the maximum amount of that in your first year contributing. But look at that as a, a long-term goal, but your first goal as it relates to your 401k should be, should be able to get to your company's match. And so once you do that, then you can still contribute and really just split half of what your raise is. Let's say if your raise is gonna be 3%, put one and a half percent into your 401k so you can get there over time. And at some point you realize that you don't even miss the money anymore. You're just contributing for yourself and for your future. Yeah, great advice. Let's jump back to Junior Achievement in Memphis in the Mid-South. Um, amazing organization. And you, you mentioned yes. a lot of great things. One, JA BizTown, which is this amazing experience that the kids get to go. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's like a mini city and you can elect yes. a player and you know, you've yes. got FedEx and you've got Cumulus Media on the, the radio station and BioSlime. First, and Horizon, First Horizon Bank. Yes. <laughs> so you've got you know, a really amazing experiential opportunity that the kids go through. But junior achievement is so much more. It's going into the class oh, so much more. The curriculum. So how do you, as both a board member and a parent, as you mentioned, how do yes. you describe junior achievement to someone who's never heard of it? Yeah. So, you know, I'll tell you, it's really curious because for me, before my kids went through this, I didn't have any exposure to it. And so for me, it's really bigger than just the biz town experience. When I think about a child, even starting from kindergarten, and going all the way through the 12th grade, it's, it's really about building blocks and really just understanding um, financial um, literacy, learning how to be an, uh, uh, an entrepreneur, that if that's part of what you wanna do. And then also the part of this really workforce readiness. And so when I think about that, um, our youth in the city, they have so much opportunity and so much to gain. But these are things that are outside, just your normal um, classroom skills that are really, I consider to be just really uh, work skills that all of us can learn from and all our children can really benefit from that. And so Junior Achievement has done, like you said before, just really an amazing job of getting us ready, our youth ready for, for long-term success. And that's really a lot that's really foundational, um, a little foundational um, experience and not just 
um, other things. So that's why I love it so much, but that's how I would describe it. Um, all those things really rolled into one, um, dealing with the child really from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And so there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer, both in the in-person experiences, but also to serve as um, someone who goes through the curriculum with the students. And so there's yeah. a lot of volunteer opportunities. Yeah. Share some of your favorite either, you know, opportunities as a volunteer or perhaps looking for new board members. What are some things that you can kind of throw out there as ways that the community can help? Oh, absolutely. I think that's a great question. So as, again, my first experience was with my children through BizTown, I was a chaperone, not really even knowing anything about it. So there are lots of ways to be able to volunteer, even where we find ourselves down, Jeremy, um, in the pandemic where we can't do things in person. We've been impacted, but I'll tell you, um, Junior Achievement has really done an amazing job of being able to transfer that um, experience to virtual experiences and really partner more. I mean, you'll find that really even going into May, we'll have this opportunity to be able to, um, not for kids just to come to the location, but for us to have a mobile um, opportunity that can go to schools and, and, and things of that as well. So there'll be plenty of opportunities. I'll tell you, even I mentioned my kids, um, they're both ready for volunteer opportunity. We're really a family unit and so bought into <laughs> this experience. I'll tell you, if you've ever met um, Lee, I think you have met Lee Mansberg before. Um, being around her is very <laughs> inspirational. And so my whole family is bought into this idea. We're really passionate about it. So there are plenty of ways to volunteer, but not just being a board member. You can give to Junior Achievement as it relates to a financial donation, or you can spend your time with helping with some of these volunteer ex experiences, especially as the way that we're going to be expanding at a school, at the location. Um, there, there are plenty of opportunities. So I encourage everyone to, um, to help with that. How has serving, especially as a board member with Junior Achievement, how has that changed you personally? Hmm. Junior Achievement was the first board that I actually served on. Um, so I was at the point where my kids were growing up. I felt like I had, had more free time. And so I talked to a colleague and they recommended because they were transitioning off of the Junior Achievement Board and asked me. And I said, well, let me do some research. And I'll tell you, once I did the research and started to serve, I was really inspired not just inspired from um, what we can do for our youth as it relates to the city, but inspired from myself to be able to have partnership and to be able to give back. And so it really did change me. I talked about my career and how when I finally got to HR, I saw how things clicked for me. It was really the same thing as it relates to me serving my community um, when I got to the Junior Achievement Board because I realized what we could do and what we could become. And that has really inspired me, um, even if we were just doing this for a few kids every week. I think one of the things that's also really powerful is the lessons that you learn working with and volunteering and serving on boards for nonprofits and how that comes back to help you professionally. What's something that's gained either a, a mindset or a strategy or a tactic? What's something that you've gained serving that you've actually brought in professionally that's maybe changed the way you look at things <laughs> professionally? Yeah, I am a, a really big advocate as it relates to mentoring. And so I have several mentees that I've had over the years and I always encourage them. I would say, you know, they always talk about the careers and they want to grow, grow, grow very fast. And I told them, I said, one of the best ways to do this and to get experience, especially if you can't do this um, through your work, is to serve on a nonprofit board. It gives you invaluable experience. It gives you opportunities to meet other leaders in our community, but also it shows you how some of the inner workings work. And so that's a valuable experience that you can use in order to grow your career. So, um, and plus you're serving the community at the same time. So it's a win-win for everyone. So I definitely um, love to give that advice. And I think too, that's something that you brought in house is launching mentoring programs. And so to your point, seeing the power of them and then saying, yes. hey, we need to instill this in our own organization and go through that process. That's, that's definitely a direct carryover that's really powerful. Absolutely. First Horizon, uh, mentoring has been around for a long time, not just at First Horizon. 
But I'll tell you, we did not have a formal program. It was all informal. You had a mentor. You were advocating for someone. You were sponsoring for some. You were sponsoring someone, but it was not formal. Um, even when I came to the bank 30 years ago, one of the first people that I met was my branch manager. And she was so invested in me and ensuring that I finished school and kept encouraging me. She was a mentor, a sponsor for me. And so that was in the days that we didn't even know what it meant or really weren't even using those terms. And so I brought that to First Horizon when we were able to launch our program. And now we have a really great, robust program at First Horizon that I'm really, really proud of. And so um, that makes all the difference in the world. Absolutely. We'll wrap up with contact information. Where would you like everyone to go to learn more about you and your efforts, First Horizon and even Junior Achievement yeah. in the South? Yeah, they can find me. I am on LinkedIn. Um, so you can find me there. But as it relates to the work of Junior Achievement, you can go to um, Junior Achievement of Memphis and find out all the wonderful programs that we do have, again, for kids through K through 12, especially where we find ourselves now. A lot of these things are virtual where you don't have to have um, in-person meetings. And I know that we're all looking for one more level of <laughs> education for our children, especially during this time. So that's where I would encourage everyone. And Jeremy, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Well, absolutely. Love everything you're doing in the community and your give back your yeah. heart to make a difference. So Tanya, thank you for being a part of the show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy.